Uh, Werner is going to speak because uh, Dr. Galassi, as I said, he is stuck in the flight. Some uh, he'll come tomorrow. He couldn't make it today. So, uh, Dr. Werner, please for Ivers in retrograde. You can also violence. use this one. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Gol. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. And uh, we're gaining some time. I hope I don't waste too much. IVAS in CTOs in channel is an indispensable tool. In the anti-grade approach, we already heard a very nice talk uh, about the anti-grade entry and re-entry. IVAS in the retrograde is my talk. It, it is important always when the wire is not progressing as you uh, expect. You can even do IVAS guided reverse cards, so having the IVAS in place but it's definitely mandatory when you do approach from the LED into the, seat, uh, into the left main, especially in LED osteal or circumflex osteal lesions. I want to show you three examples to highlight my points. This is a long CTO, ambiguous. We do a retrograde approach. Retrograde is easy. The wire is almost there. Uh, we come with an anti-grade wire, we are overlapping, I do the usual balloon inflation, but the retrograde wire will simply not advance. So I need to understand what to do. This is the typical situation, we want to make the connection within the plaque. But in the plaque there are multiple entities like calcium or fibrous situations. So this is the IVUS pullback, you see the anti-grade wire uh, the anti-grade IVUS in an eccentric but luminal position. Here it's probably subintimal, and you see clearly the retrograde wire. It's almost it's already through to the true uh, the proximal lumen, but the problem is that it's stuck behind this calcium. So actually, the wire is true lumen but there was not enough power. So I changed the wire to a more forceful wire and then I went easily further on. So I understood that there is simply resistance that needs to be overcome by the wire which was then clearly in the true lumen. And when we then do the review after opening and uh, connecting, you see that the retrograde wire was all true lumen but the anti-grade wire had finally been in a subintimal position and created a lot of hematoma. And this is also important when we put stents. We would put stent just before this segment because we want to cover the area where we have a true lumen swimming in a pool of blood, a typical feature of the hematoma, which we don't want to extend further down. So it's helpful to position the stent in this case. You see it's all true lumen, but around there was poking with the anti-grade wire, which did not make the connection. And here we are actually in the plaque. There's some dissection from ballooning. And we enter the proximal cap. And this is complete restoration by proper stenting uh, according to the IVAS image. Now, it's mandatory to use retrograde wiring together with IVAS when you approach the left main. This is one example. This is a, let me try this wonderful features here. I don't get them. Okay. Sorry. I try to go back. Can you go back? I can't get access to the laser pointer. Go back, please. Back. Okay. So, can you activate the laser pointer? I don't know where to, to point here. Okay, I cannot... Ah, no. There it is. Okay. So, we have a CTO here with an ambiguous cap. And this is the very small distal LED connected epicardially from here. Okay, it doesn't work with the laser pointer. 
<laughs> okay, I tried this one. Yeah. Okay. Now you need to deactivate the laser pointer. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. So we go around ipsilateral. That was the issue in the previous uh, talk. And of course, we will always go with the uh, two guides because of the issues, especially here with the IVIS. So I have the retrograde uh, caravel here in this position. And the wire looks like it connects with the proximal wire, but it just doesn't pass here, the cap. So I need to understand what is the problem. Because if I start looping and looping, I may cause a great problem. So what I do, I get into some small side branch with the IVUS and the second catheter, and then visualize what is my problem. And now we need to understand, of course, IVUS imaging. This is the very small side branch. The LED is here, and the wire is coming outside through the subintimal space, and looks like it's there, but it's subintimal. And if I would progress even further, you see, I would create great havoc in the left main. I had to reposition, re rewire the wire. This is the first attempt. It's closer, but it's still subintimal. It's very important to understand. So I did another uh, repositioning of the wire, which was actually a confianza, and now it's clearly straight through the true lumen into the LED, and you see the subintimal hematoma already created a little bit, and we are in the true lumen, and we can conclude this case. So if you are dissecting the left main in this instance, it's your mistake, yours only. Now, I want to finish with a more lengthy case, an RCA, where you see, again, Ibis tells me what is the problem and how to solve it. This is rather short CTO, but actually the CTO is distal. Uh, I completely misunderstood the case when I pr uh, got the initial, initial uh, CD because that is not really the problem. The problem starts here down. Uh, this case was treated by an outside center. They first went for the LED and diagonal, and then they found a CTO, and they, of course, waited, and then further evaluated the patient. He had still angina and at high levels, and then they explored, and they did an antigrade attempt but failed. When you get the failed case, you need to plan what is possible. And of course, we have the stents here in this situation, but there is an access uh, to the LED uh, RCA, which originates a little bit further down. We can also go through stents, but this is maybe not the preferred pathway. The preferred pathway would be rather go distal. So as always, we will advance our integrate gear first because there's always a likelihood that you can succeed. And actually the CTO, as you see here, is down there. This is a side branch and the CTO is in this location. So once we realize that, we go retrograde. I skipped the retrograde approach. We just, I could have uh, kept it when I realized that Freddy is not here. <laughs> I did a selective injection. I sh uh, went with the Sion wire. And now we are in a position where, again, the wire is almost in, in contact. But again, I cannot make the connection. So I need to understand. And here is an algorithm uh, that I have developed uh, what to do. If the wire and the integrate and retrograde wire connect and you get through, of course, you don't need IVUS. But if you have a connection and the wires do not even overlap, you need to understand, is there calcium? Is there some problem? to make the connection? Or do I have to move my wire connection base, maybe forward or backward? 
So in this situation, the wires are overlapping, so I need to understand the connection zone. What is the problem? Is there uh, calcium? So this is the IVUS there. This is the small branch. This is the RCA coming from distal. And now we realize where is our wire. It's coming here. You see the typical shadow. And it enters into the vessel structure, but inside the plaque. And then leaves this, uh, gets into the subintimal space. So I have to redirect the wire here. I'll illustrate the situation. Here is our target. This is the guide wire. Then a little bit further up, we have the true lumen, but the guide wire being outside. And the guide wire transit transiting into the subintimal space here and clearly outside. So I need to increase my balloon size here to create a crack in the plaque and make the connection. And this is shown here on this frame. So this is the IVUS image I just showed you. And watch here the fluoro image. When I move back my wire, So I move back the wire, take a slightly different route, and then it already you feel it slips through. And then look at the corresponding IVUS image. Again, this is proximal. Now we move the IVUS forward, distal, and we see that now we have entered the inner space of this plaque. There is a small transition zone, and we made the connection. This is Ivis uh, afterwards. You see here again the transition into the true lumen. And then you, of course, assess where to put the stent, and this was a rather lengthy procedure because we also had to recanalize the PL, uh, the PL branch but final procedural result with two-stand strategy was quite good. So highlighting the importance of IVUS, it's indispensable, it's required. It would be required not in all procedures, but I think it would be uh, worthwhile using it because it might optimize your stent result for the long run, and we need to look into the future. It's not acute results that we should achieve, but long-term results mu must be the focus of our future research. There are many, uh, many typical situations where IVUS helps to decide, and I just highlighted those which are important for the retrograde approach. Thank you very much. Uh, I have one question. Uh, when there is calcium in the vessels, Sometimes I have observed the IVUS uh, becomes almost non-interpretable because the calcium produces so much of shadowing. So what is your uh, thought on that? Because there are vessels with more calcium. Like your calcium was yeah. very localized and you could, it could help. I but when the, the calcium is extensive, uh, IVUS becomes very difficult, I feel. Uh, the information that you get by this huge block of calcium is that at that point you will never make a transition. So you need to move your wire into an area with less calcium. That is the information you take. So you cannot identify the wire in the calcium, but also you cannot penetrate at that point. So you need either go forward, more distal, or proximal. So that's an important uh, finding in IVUS in the retrograde transition mm -hmm. zone we have to move the connection point because we cannot penetrate calcium. Okay. Okay. We, we Any other question? Thank you, Dr. Werner. Yeah, Dr. Asso.